Hello friends, today we are going to learn about uh, CPM deterministic model to crash the project, uh, a mathematical analysis based on the schedule compression. So let's get started. Uh, if you have not already watched my uh, analysis on critical path method, uh, they can, then you can go to my channel here uh, and find the video and you can watch. Uh, this is an example uh, uh, for mathematical analysis. XYZ company is bringing a new product online to be manufactured in their current facility in existing space. The owners have identified 11 activities and their precedence relationship developed an Aaron diagram uh, for the project. So uh, this is, uh, if you know critical math method, you will be able to draw the activity on node diagram like this, which just speaks about uh, um, uh, when uh, the activity can take place. Like for example, activity B can take place only if A has completed, activity C can only um, start when the activity A has completed, D can only start after B has completed, and these are the durations. So using this table, I constructed this uh, network diagram. A takes four four weeks, and B can only start when A has finished. Similarly, for C, C can only start if A has finished. And based on this, these are the connected paths. And after calculating the total number of uh, um, total number of weeks it, each one takes, the highest uh, number of weeks which pa whichever path takes becomes the critical path. Uh, for this project. Uh, this is uh, when uh, optimistic time, most likely time and pessimistic time is given. You need to calculate the expected time using this formula which is uh, also called part analysis. So in part analysis you have to use this formula uh, to calculate the expected time for each of the activity. The formula is optimistic plus four times most likely plus, plus pessimistic, the whole thing divided by six. All the, uh, this will give you the expected time for each of the activity. And this is the network diagram with expected activity times. Uh, you know, just put the expected uh, number of weeks as the duration in the activity node. And then again write the connected path and uh, uh, add those uh, number of weeks on each of the connected path. The highest number gives you the critical path. So estimated path duration to the network, expected duration, this becomes the critical path 44.83, the second one. This is using part estimate. So now estimating the probability of completion date. Using prob uh, probabilistic time estimate offers the advantage of predicting the uh, probability of a project completion dates. We have already calculated the expected time for each activity by making three time estimates. We now need to calculate the variance of each activity. The variance of beta distribution is standard deviation is equal uh, is calculated using this formula. Pessimistic minus optimistic time divided by 6. A variance is calculated using this. Standard deviation whole squared. And using the above formula, I calculated the variance. And for each of the activity, these are the variance. Uh, and then calculating the path variance in weeks. So using this table, you can add the variance for each of the path on each of the activity and you'll get these. So the highest variance comes in the critical path. This second one is our critical path as calculated before. So the highest variance in the number of weeks is 4.96. Calculating the probability of completing the project in less than a specified time. So whenever we need to uh, do a project uh, in less time, which is also known as crashing, but, uh, before doing that, we should calculate the probability to find out uh, whether it will be successful. What's the probability 
of the project being successful in that particular time. So this is the method to calculate the probability. When you know the expected completion time, its variance, you can calculate the probability of completing the project in X weeks with the following formula. Z is the Z-score, which is calculated as a specified time uh, expected uh, a specified time minus z score is calculated as specified time minus path expected time divided by path standard time which is also denoted by this formula so after uh, after you have the z score from the above formula uh, you can calculate the probability by using uh, the z-score table, a calculator, or using Excel sheet, you can use the formula norm best and, uh, of z. So you will be able to find the probability for each of the path. So for each path, you use this formula to calculate the z-value, and using z-value, you can calculate the probability. So we know that for the critical path, the probability of the project to complete is uh, only 0.922 but for other uh, non-critical path it's like 1 so whenever we want to reduce the timeline the um, um, the highest um, risk goes for the critical path reducing project completion time project completion times may need to be shortened because different deadlines uh, following reason, different deadlines, penalty clauses, need to put resources on a pr new project, promised completion dates, reduced project completion time is crashing. Crashing a project needs to balance, shorten a project duration, Ca cost to uh, shorten the project duration, crashing a project uh, requires you to know crash, uh, crash time of each activity, crash cost of each activity, crash cost uh, divided by duration is equal to crash cost minus normal cost divided by normal time minus crash time. So reducing the cost of project is called crashing. So this is the table given and the cost of reduction per, uh, per week and how much is the maximum number of week we can reduce for each of the activity and this is the cost uh, per week for uh, putting extra resources to crash the project. Crashing example. Project manager wants to reduce the new project, a new product uh, project from 41 to 36 weeks. Crashing costs are considered to be linear. Look to crash activities on critical path. So whenever we, uh, we have to redu uh, do the crashing or reduce the timeline, we first need to, we, we must uh, crash the schedule of the critical path. So crash the least expensive activities on the critical path. So we, since we need to reduce the number of weeks by 5, we will list down which all activity are on the critical path uh, and find out which, which one of those activities have the least per week critical path. So, uh, I have identified the three of them which have the least cost. So crash activity I from three weeks to two weeks and the cost is $1,000. Crash activity J from weeks four, four weeks to two weeks and cost it costs $2,400. Crash activity D from six weeks to four weeks and the cost comes to $4,000. So total recommended crash cost is $7,400. So the next question to ask is, will crashing 5 weeks return more in benefit than in cost? So we must do cost benefit analysis based on these before moving forward with the crashing. This is the crash network diagram with the critical path. This. There are two critical paths now. Whenever we do crashing, the number of critical path increases and the project goes uh, suffers from more risk. So we should think more uh, whenever we are doing crashing. The, the second method is critical chain approach. The critical chain approach focuses on a project 
due dates rather than on individual activities and the following realities. Project time estimates are uncertain, so we add safety time. Multi-level of organization may add additional time to be safe. Individual activity buffers may be wasted on lower priority activities. A better approach is to place the project safety buffer at the end. So in critical path, this is the original critical path and in critical chain method we just put a project buffer. Whenever it is needed, we can use it. Adding feeder buffer to critical chains. The theory of constraint, the basis of the critical chain focuses on keeping the bottlenecks busy. Time buffers can be put between bottlenecks in the critical path. These feeder buffers protect the critical path from delays in non-critical paths. Activity B1 buffer goes here. This is just an example of feeder buffer. This is the feeder buffer and this is the project buffer at the end. This is also a feeder buffer. So guys, I hope uh, you got some insights on scheduling, uh, compression, mathematical analysis, uh, crashing. And there is one more co concept called uh, fast tracking, which is uh, uh, like doing activities in parallel. Uh, but remember, fast tracking involves more risk. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want more information on critical chain analysis and other, I'll, I'll solve more examples on, on these so that you can understand more. Thank you very much.